Uh, my name is Amani Aziz Rahman. I'm a pediatric emergency consultant as well as simulation educator and uh, the chairperson for advertisement in the Society of Sim Saudi Society for Simulation. And today it's my pleasure to be at the moderator for uh, the lecture of writing a curriculum using a six uh, step approach. Uh, it's gonna be presented by Dr. Walid. Dr. Walid is a medical simulation educator and uh, he is a safety scientist and specialist with the experience of eight years uh, uh, in this field. He was leading and collaborating research. Uh, he has innovation and development in, uh, in, in this area. Uh, he's passion to improve uh, simulation regarding safety in healthcare. And he also provides expert uh, uh, expertise in risk uh, and safety consultation to simulation uh, centers. Uh, probably Dr. Walid is one of the uh, like uh, very few people who's uh, expert in safety of uh, human factors and uh, he is actually working in my center, King Fahad Medical City. Dr. Al Harbi is also a chairperson in postgraduate simulation in King Fahad Medical City and he worked as a consultation for medical simulation and for human factor uh, with clinical and uh, academic expertise. Uh, uh, with other people who's in United States, United uh, Kingdom, and Saudi Arabia. He also worked, he did not mention it, but I know that he was working with evasion uh, for human factor. So, uh, Dr. Walid, mic is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Amani. Thanks so much. This is uh, actually my pleasure to present a uh, writing curriculum Writing like I'm using six steps approach tonight for well, this uh, presentation. Just, just, just I want to mention something. Uh, we wanted, I, I do like to present it. We're gonna just share knowledge. We're gonna discuss discuss it. So anyone wants to uh, to speak, to talk, please just raise your hand and go ahead. So writing a curriculum using a six steps approach. Tonight, at the end of this lecture or presentation, you'll be able to define the curriculum, describe the six steps approach of curriculum development, recognize the main differences between the goal and objectives, classify different levels of goals and objectives based on the Bloom's taxonomy, and demonstrate competence in writing goals and objectives. Think through this problem. How would you teach someone to tie a tie? Or another example. How would you how would you teach someone to, to sing? But th think about this, this problem deeply. How would you train someone to be a healthcare professionals? I'm sure you're where in your mind this is the you have to have a plan. So curriculum is an educational plan experience. You have a course, you want to conduct a course, you have to have a plan for it. Fundamentally, curriculum is an educational plan, acknowledge the learning is optimized only when multiple phases of the learning process are synergized, organized, and integrated over time. So, develop a curriculum is more than just a teaching or just a clear objectives and goal, or just to make sure this skill is mastered. A curriculum is how all these pieces are put together. So, a six steps are problem identification and general need assessment. When we want to teach a course or a session or training session, the first step, we have to have a problem. We have to have a rationale why we are doing this, why we are going to teach, why we are going to, 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 to make this, this, this happen. Need assessment for targeted learners, goals and objectives, educational strategies, implementation, 
evaluation and feedback. We're gonna talk about all each step in detail. So in this shape, we're gonna pull all together the six steps, problem identification, then targeted need assessment, goal and objectives, educational strategies, implementation and evaluation. Problem identification and general need assessment. What does it, what, what does that mean? We have, as I said before, we have to have a gap. We have to have a reason. We have to have a rational why we are doing this course. Identification the problem will help us to know what's the next steps. Identification and characterization of the healthcare problems or or, or problem that we are planning to have a course to conduct a course to solve it up. We have to answer this question. Whom does it affect? Either the patient or the healthcare professionals or the medical educators or the society or the environment we are working in. So when we have a clear definition of the problem, that can help us to focus on the curriculum's goals and objectives, which is the next step, which in turn helps focus on curriculum and educational and evaluation strategies. How we can have the general need assessment? When you think about the general need assessment, as easy definition of it is, what are the key differences between the current and ideal approaches? So the difference between how the problem is currently being addressed and how it should be ideally being addressed is the general need assessment. How they intubate right now, how they using the, the how, how they are uh, inserting the IV cannula, the current situation and what should be ideally, this is the general need assessment. So we have a gap, we have a rationale, we have a reason to conduct a course. Needs assessment for targeted learners. And the first step, I said, I identify the problem and general need assessment. In summary, I said, the general need assessment is the difference between what being currently done and what should be ideally. Need assessment for targeted learners is the difference between the ideal and actual characteristic of the targeted learners group and their environment. You have to know your targeted learners, your targeted participants. Why? Learn about targeted learners to decide what information is most needed. How can we, or what, what, what the information that's gonna help us to, to know more about the targeted learners? So we have to have the previous and already planned training. Existed proficiencies and current performance for them. Learning style, preferences regarding the different learning strategies, barriers, enabling and reinforcing factors. All these steps, all these points gonna help us as an educator, as educators, to plan our course, to plan our simulation session. So, methods to get this information. 
that's going to help us to know the assessment or needs assessment for our targeted group. It can be done or gathered from informal discussion or formal interviews, whether face-to-face -face or focus group discussion. It could be either from the focus group discussion again, surveys, direct observation of skills. As you ask the observe, you are a senior, you are a supervisor. You showed like a behavior or skills that missing your junior staff. This is this is the the the, the need assessment or the examinations whether like if you have undergrad medical students, OSCE or different uh, tests for other healthcare professionals. Audits of current performance. And the strategy plan session. So now we identify the problem we have a general need assessment. The second step, we know our targeted learners, our students, our participants. We know their need assessment for them. We know very well. We gathered the information that's going to help us, whether from these points or different points that you might uh, write in the chat. The third step, just to have to set a goal and objectives. What does goal mean? And what does the objective mean? Like, what the difference between them? Goal is a broad statement of expected learning outcome of the educational activity. Usually, is a broad. And at the end of the course or decision or training, you're going to answer this question. You're going to reach your goal. What is the purpose of educational activity? And what is the main intention of this course? Your goal has to answer these questions. These questions can be came from the first and second steps. So, where about the objectives? Objective is a specific statement of observable, of observable students' behavior that can be measured and contributes to reach the learner's goals. This is an example. So, objectives is only a short goal that can help us to reach the out, like over and, 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 and the main goal. Look at here. The goal of learning activity is like a target. We have a target. We want to reach that target by end of this course. This is our goal. While the objectives are the arrows that help the institution, whether the hospital, the department, a student, to reach target and demonstrate mastery. So, the goal to let your students to master the IV cannula and search an IV cannula. One of the objectives should be first the hygiene, second the skills. Differences between the goal and objectives. Goal is usually be like a broad, broad statements, generally hard to measure. 
general purposes and abstract. While the objective usually is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Example of a goal and its objectives. Let's take this example, mountain climbing. Can you write here, what is the goal and objectives? Just share it please in, 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 in the uh, question and answer or in the chat. You can share it in the chat or you like, uh, you're allowed to, uh, if you raise oh, you your can. hand. Yes, you raise just, your just hand raise your hand and please. Yeah. Yes, I wanted please. to give what a goal and at least an objective for this picture. So if you if you want to like uh, write a curriculum or like even a scenario um, regarding mountain climbing, so what is going to be your goal and what do you think the objective is going to be? So again, it's not it can be anything. It's, it's no uh, wrong. Okay, goal to reach the top, reach the top of the mountain. Perfect, Nihal, mashallah. Any other opinions? Try to talk Another one. Uh, the rest of for 15 minutes. Yep. Goal is the participant will be able to identify the safety. And the objective is utilize the appropriate measurement of safety. So by now you know the difference between the yeah. goal and objective. Overall goal is to achieve the peak of the mountain, top of the mountain. How can we achieve it? By objectives. List the proper needed equipment for climbing. Identify the appropriate weather for climbing. Choose the easiest and shortness of, shortest way to achieve the peak. And demonstrate the competency in the climbing techniques using the proper equipment. So, the question is, why are learned objectives are important? Providing learning objectives to the participant will, just write it in the chat. What do you think? Why learning objectives are important? If you think about this previous example, also the climbing mountain, what do you think? Why it's why it's very important to highlight what is the objective in anything that you're going to do. Good, so it's going to help you to reach the goal. This is, to know what you will achieve at the end of something. So you have to know what you. So what, I'm just going to rephrase what uh, Sarah mentioned that probably you want to be to be measurable, and you want to organize your thoughts. So you want to know what you actually are doing, and you want to other. Not you, even or even the learner. You want the learner also to know what you actually want to do. So organize your thoughts to know what you achieve, uh, to be able to evaluate. So you want to evaluate. So you want to use this objective uh, as uh, evaluation, and you want to use it as to decide an instruments. So you want to know like what actually you caliber to use to this. You want to facilitate. So you want to have a possibility, uh, like the way to use this goal. So you want to approach. Good. Any other ideas? What else? I think in this way, like it's the easiest way to think about smart. If anybody heard about the smart, 
preparedness, good, and be able to focus. Well, no. So, so, so be able to have like specific thing rather than generalized ideas. Absolutely. Good discussion. So provide a learn objective to the participant wall. Describe the content of the learning activities and what was expectation from the learners? What you are expect, expected from the learners to do? Specifies the desired outcome, which will be measured after the activity, as you mentioned, guys. And evaluate, assess the students, the participants, the healthcare professionals, performance, as well as the course content, the simulation session content. So, the main characteristics of the learning objectives. What the characteristic of the main of the of the objectives? As the Dr. Amani mentioned, smart. Our goals or our objectives has to follow smart. Specific, measurable. Attainable, relevant, and time bound. So, can I ask you to write an objective that that has all the smart? If we use the same example, the mountain. Like, uh, I think this example is a good example to use it and uh, to build an objective for a smart rather than being like to be specific, to be more easy to concentrate on that part. Just think about whatever, whatever you have in, in, your, in your organization, just write an objective. So Hadir wrote at the end of the day of climbing all cl uh, at the end of the day of climbing, all climbers will be able to reach the top safely. Great, another. Thank you, Hadir, for sharing. Anybody have another objective? At the end of the session, the learner will be able to change addressing using sterile technique within 30 minutes. Okay. Thank you, Shadia. Thank Shadia. you, Shadia. It is a specific. Yeah. Measurable. Attainable. Relevant, relevant to the practice. To the goal. And time bound. And time based. And this is very important to, to when you, you when you write your objective. You like it depends on your scenario, it depends on your uh, curriculum. But you have to, it have to be each objective. It have to be the same thing. It just because it's going to be easier for you and for the learner and for the educator to able to assess the learner and the course as well. Sahih Yeah. At the end of the teaching, all students will. Slides, your slide to... jumped to the first, yeah, Wari. There's Sorry? a slide. You, uh, it came back to the first slide. What about now? It's still the same. Yes, good. Yeah. So. Anyone? So, specific, I mean by specific is who's the target? The population? What will accomplish? What will be achieved? Measurable is the objective quantified. Can it be measured? And how much change is expected? Achievable, our objective has to be achieved. 
and accomplished. Realistic, does this objective address the goal? And will the objective have an impact on a goal or not? It has to be a realist. We have to be realistic. Our objectives have to be realistic. Time bound, does the objective proposes of a timeline when the objective will be met? Remember guys, goal and objective gonna help us to prioritize, direct our content, our simulation session, identify, identify the learning methods that we're gonna use and enable and indirect the, and, and, and our feedback and evaluation layer on and step number six. Plume's taxonomy and objective level. There is a type of objective based on the Plume's taxonomy. Remember, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and curating. So we have our, our objectives fall into three domains, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. What does that mean? What, what does cognitive mean? If you can share it in the, in the chat. Great idea. So what do you mean by cognitive? Level of understanding? fall into which one? Cognitive, psychomotor, or affective? And what does the cognitive mean? So Hadil, what you're saying that uh, cognitive is like recalling or describing, analyzing, utilizing. Um, so, cognitive related to? And knowledge. saying cognitive means understanding, and Dr. Sayed mentioned yeah, cognitive it means right. actual knowledge. Exactly, Dr. Sayed. Is a knowledge. What about the effective and psychomotor? Attitude. Emotion, attitude, ability to think, mental. Mentally, skills. Emotion, Maz Dehrani. Yeah. Motor skills. Skills. Mahasi. Yeah, plus water, like skills. So, objectives fall into three domains. Knowledge, attitude, and skills. Cognitive, what do you want your learners, your participant? to know in your simulation session? An attitude or effective? Attitudes, values, beliefs, emotions, root expectation, what you want as, as an educator from your learners, from your participant to think or care about. And number three is psych psychomotor like skills. Objectives, what do you want from your learners to be able to do at the end of the simulation session? So this is the useful verbs, writing and learning objective based on the Bloom taxonomy. I think uh, Ms. Hadil and other Fox here mentioned some, whether like remembering Understanding, associate, classify, compare, contrast, confer, describe, estimate, explain, or applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating, and this is the first. Whoever wants this, this, this is well verbs, he can contact whether the uh, organizers, that, then, then I'll, I'll send it to her or him. So we have an example here. What do you think about this goal? 
This course is designed to be ensured that learners will have a comprehensive understanding of maximum rely barriers and, and aseptic techniques during the central line insertion to prevent central line associated bloodstream infection. What do you think guys about this goal? Let's say if you are the person who is actually reviewing this uh, as educator, what do you think about this? Are you happy, satisfied about this goal? So Ahmed saying that this is includes objective. So you mean like it's very specific, it's not generalized, right, yeah, Ahmed? That's what you think? So you're saying, yes, yeah, so it's, it's very specific rather than being generalized uh, as objective, as a goal. It's, it's like an objective rather than a goal. Dr. Sayyid, Hadil. Rahman mentioned that it's not measurable. So just a reminder, guys, we're talking about the goal. We're not talking about goal, the objective. Not objective. We're not talking about objective. We're talking about the goal. Right, so an objective have to follow SMART. Exactly. So when we talk about the immeasurable, it's actually, we will talk about SMART. But we talk about the goals, we talk about generalization, as Dr. Walid mentioned. So no timing. Ahmed saying, uh, Dr. Ahmed Khabrani saying there's no timing. And uh, Dr. Mahmoud saying there is the outcome uh, by the end of this goal. There is an outcome uh, by, uh, by the end of the goal. Any thoughts? Ms. Rade? So. So, uh, Sajida mentioned there, there is a goal. This is a goal and it's a journalized. So we think the, what she actually mean, I'm just gonna rephrase what uh, probably Sajida mean, that it's, it's a goal. So it's actually meant to be a generalized rather than being a specific. It's a general, right. So objectives. So okay. I think, well, if you go back to the Run. goal, I think, hey, Walid, as, as, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go, go ahead, Dr. Amani. No, no, I'm just, I'm just going to say, so as a goal, so I think as a goal, this is going to be like, it's fine because it's it generalized and it, it's not specific, which is that what we need a goal. We need the bigger picture rather than being a specific. So, but, so the, the main point, when you see any goal, you, uh, you want to, when you read it, you want to understand what actually the person who wrote the course or who wrote the curriculum want to say you you want to know what actually they mean so that's what they mean we mean by the goal we want we want the general idea is that right dr walid yep so this is a goal right where i'm going to ask you now kindly to write an objective to achieve this goal every one of you just write an objective whether cognitive, effective, attitudinal, or psychomotor skills to achieve our goal. Again, our goal is to ensure that the learners will have comprehensive understanding of the maximum sterilized barriers and aseptic techniques during central line insertion to prevent central line associated bloodstream infection. So this is our goal for now. Kindly write one objective. Each one of you kindly just write an objective. And a kind reminder: when we when we may, when we say objective, we need it to be uh, matching smart and to use the Bloom taxonomy verb. Whether they're cognitive, attitudinal, or psychomotor. You can use this first. I'll be first. So Dr. Mahmoud saying that 
uh, identify, identify the risk factors associated with the yeah, epilepsy. Yeah. And uh, able chat. to list this tip, the central line insertion based. Demonstrate epileptic techniques to access epilepsy. At the end of this course, the learner will be able to analyze the antiseptic solution used while car carrying central. Why so hard? Huh? So, where is it? Mashallah, they're right, so fast. Can the central line effectively? I should understand the student by using the video regards the topic. What do you think, guys, about the reach? <laughs> by end of this call, learners will be able to demonstrate aseptic techniques on central line insertion. At the end of this course, the participant will be demonstrate the correct infection control standards. Because you are so awesome, I swear to God. Apply sterile techniques in central line insertion. And there is also how do central line uh, inserted in, in central uh, central line in sterile way. By the end of the course, the participant will understand the difference way to of aseptic technique. That was awesome, amazing. Yeah. So I think everybody like understand the, the general idea that you have to have a specific timing. So you always want to, you want to, you want to, uh, the, you want to know when, like when is your end of this, uh, at the end of the course or end of the year or end of the semester. So this is very important that you have to specific time and you have to specific like what's, is it cognitive or, uh, 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 skills or attitude, and then you have to it's it, you have to measure it, and it have to be attainable and relevant to your practice. I think there is another two. Uh, Dr. Nihar wrote, identify the steps and equipment needed to have full stride technique to reach our goal, our course goal. Perfect. And, and Hadid, at the end of the of this training, the learner will be able to explore the patient fears of central life. So this is basically a cognitive one. At the end of the course, learner will be able to list steps of performing aseptic technique and central line insertion procedure. And uh, so this is, uh, this, uh, as Hadi mentioned, this is the effectiveness one. Yeah. For me, I wrote like demonstrate the proper, at the end of this educational activity, the participant will be able to demonstrate the proper hand hygiene, demonstrate the sterile glove and proper donor. If you can highlight, Dr. Walid, why you use demonstrate rather than any other, like why you use the, this verb? If you, go, if you go back to the verbs, why did you use demonstrate? What's okay. the aim okay. of this? Can they answer it? Can anybody answer why he used demonstrate? Why why he like a demonstrate, apply, demonstrate. Than... Why? You're gonna, gonna go back. So because it's the skills, and demonstrate is psychomotor, so demonstrate is the skills. Uh, okay, any other thoughts? It's a measurable verb, but why you, it, all of them is actually a measurable verb. So why demonstrate, when you, we do prefer uh, in any skills to use pre, uh, demonstrate rather than any other, especially if it's a skills. So why this action verb comparing to other verbs? Just write it down in the chat box, please. So they wrote action verb related to the goal specifically. Yeah to show performance. So I think, yeah, I think this is the closest one that it's what we actually mean. We want them, uh, when you demonstrate, you want them, they have to learn before and then they have to show it. So it's actually three steps of learning. They, ha they have to know the knowledge first and then they have to practice it and then they have to, to teach it and demonstrate it. So that's why demonstrate is a higher level of action verb comparing to others. So it's a psychomotor, yes, it's action verb, but it's actually, it's a higher level of uh, of understanding. Cool, we nice. are targeting psychomotor skills that be observed by assessors. So yes, yes, yeah. Right. So to know and to teach how exactly. I think we can move on to the next step. So we yeah. finished now three. We finished the goal. And yes, we're we gonna finish we, right. We we finished the first step, which is 
identify the problem and general need assessment. Yes, and finish the second one, which is- The second one, need assessment for our targeted learners. Now we have a problem. We have a rationale to conduct this simulation session. We know our participant very well. We set goal and objectives. The step number four, educational strategies. What does that mean, educational strategies? Once the goal and objective are determined, the next step of our conducting writing a curriculum is to develop educational strategies, our method, the content, specific materials to be included in the curriculum, and the method, methods. What's the way this content is gonna be delivered to our participants? You have to know your participants very well. You have to have more than one teaching methods. Can you write guys in the, in the, in the chat box here? Two or three methods that we can teach using the simulation. So way in which content is delivered. Task manner, okay. Lecture, demonstration, videos. Thank you, Shadia, Hadil, Sayyid. Simulators, a case study, role play, yep. Flip class. High fidelity flip class, video. Play, problem problem is learning, yep. Yeah. So guys, please just make sure whatever, whenever, whatever, wherever you're gonna conduct a simulation course, simulation session, you have to have different methods, different teaching methods, different strategies that to deliver your content to the participants. So guidelines for choose the educational methods. So usually bear in your mind that maintain relation between the objectives and the methods. What's the best way to achieve to deliver this, this, this objectives to achieve your objective by this method. Select method appropriate for cognitive, affective, and psychomotor objectives. So I have a question for you, Dr. Walid, since you're saying uh, that you have to mix. So why you think, why you're highlighting that you have to do like different couple methods when you teach? Okay, who gonna answer this question from Dr. Amani? Who gonna help me guys to answer it? So I'm just gonna re-ask it again. So Dr. Walid mentioned that, uh, that it's better to mix and match between two or different type of uh, educational method rather than using just only one uh, in educational. So it, it's, pre it's, it's preferable to have two or three methods to teach. Like teach a class and educate like video and lecture or something. I think they've been answering it. There is a couple of answers. They said like uh, refer to the objective, uh, different levels different to participants. So I think what, what this means is participant learning is different. Different, uh, They have different care of learning. Uh, refer to the objective of understanding. People have different levels, as Dr. Rani had mentioned. Method depends on the objective. So yes, sometimes it depends on the methods. Sometimes it depends on the objective. Sometimes it depends on the learner. Different learning preference. Yes, some people are visual. Exactly, some people are making different understanding. Awesome. Awesome. Thank um, you one, for helping. Absorb information. Method depends on the yep. objective, target learner. Consider different learning uh, capabilities of the learner. And uh, the availability, availability of the resources to ensure learning can pick up with more than one methods. Support idea and support applying. So I think, yes, this is very important to highlight that you want to have a different ways. If you want to summarize Perfect. why. Yeah. Using the multiple educational methods different uh, educational, different uh, and instructional methods gonna help us to meet different learning style for adults and to motivate 
maintain learners' interest and reinforcement of the learning. You don't want your participant to be born. So you have to get their attention. One of the strategy, change your methods. Educational methods has to be changed, had to have a lot of educational methods, not only one, not only presenting. Choose the educational methods are visible in terms of resources. Use your visible, use your resources. Do not go behind your, beyond your, 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 your resources, your cost resources. This is for meeting cognitive objectives. Reading, lectures, videos, discussion, problem solving exercise, program learning or learning projects. So, and to achieve the skills objectives, supervise the clinical experience by self as a senior, as, as an educator, artificial models, rule plays, and SP. Or you can use the audio or visual reviews of skills before they go on to do them by themselves. Again, we have here some methods that gonna achieve the attitudinal or effective objectives, the high fidelity simulation, again, role play and SP, a non-technical skills training. What does non-technical skills training? What does non-technical skills? Anyone knows that? We all know about the technical skills. We're going to give us an example of non-technical skills, soft skills like communication, perfect. Human well, factors, communication. Yeah. Communication, <laughs> behavior, human factor, communication skills. What else? Nine percent for our job is communication. I think it's a more. Attitude. Teamwork. Team. Leadership. Say leadership, social skills, leadership, leadership skills. Exactly. Problem solving. Situational awareness. What does this, that mean? Sorry, it's, it's not about the non technical skills, just, just like a, this is side talk. Situation awareness. What does situation awareness mean? Is what is going on around us? This is your making, this is your making teamwork, critical analysis. Perfect participants. Love you all, guys. So now we done four steps. We identify. We have a problem. We identify the problem. General need assessment. Need assessment for our targeted group. We set the goal and objectives. We choose the methods that gonna help us to achieve our objectives. Different methods. We bear in our mind the relation between the objectives and the methods. So number five, implementation. So identify resources to implement, to conduct this simulation course, simulation session training. Identify resources needed. Personnel, like faculty, secretaries, administrative, uh, support, patients, SP, we have to have a time. Support staff, learners, faculty, facilities, space, equipment, clinical sites, rooms. The funding, this is most one of the most uh, challenges in, in each organization, the cost, the funding, direct financial cost, hidden or opportunity cost. The uh, obtained support you need, whether the internal or outside for, for, for your course, internal inside the, the organization, outside, uh, this is the under umbrella of the MOH. Usually you have to burn your mind to anticipate what issue there might or barriers. 
obstacles that might to, to face during the course. Again, financial and other resources, challenging demands, people, attitudes, whether, especially when you teach or educate the undergraduate students. Or, so just you have to, to deal with, with their attitudes, attitudes, whether like job awards, security, the security or power, electricity related, uh, plan or introduce the curriculum, pilot it, usually just pilot it before uh, give the green light to, to implement it. So now we've done, we conducted the simulation course already. The last step is the evaluate and feedback. The question is, why is important to have or to evaluate and feedback and what we are looking to evaluate, what we gonna evaluate? Write in the chat, chat box, guys. To assist the achievement. Perfect, Shadia. Objective as well, evaluate. What does that mean? What does that mean, objective? I know just I wanted to write it in clear statement. Very important for improvement. Perfect. Evaluate to know if the learners. Stability for the needs of the learners. Outcomes. Each outcomes. The behavior as well as mentioned. Outcome goals and objective. Behavior, outcomes, goal, objectives. Perfect, guys. So, action to see if evaluation and feedback gonna help us to provide the information to guide individuals and the curriculum and the cycle of, of, of improvement. So, we're gonna evaluate ourselves as an educator, the content, and the participants. So, the evaluation result can be used to seek support for curriculum, assist the individual achievement, serve as basis for presentation and publication, pre and post test. It's gonna help us like an evaluation, gonna help us to write a paper, gonna help us to improve ourselves as educator and our material our teaching methods, our environment. So there's two kinds of formative and summative assessment. Just guys, just write in the chat box, what difference between the formative and summative assessment? Are they the same? So Shadia mentioned formative feedback and formative for improvements. So I think what she meant uh, with it meant that, that yeah, summative is a final grading, summative is assessment. Formative is uh, to provide learner with the feedback and formative is for, e for each objective. Well, Informal feedback during the session. Perfect, Dr. Sayed. End of the course, before and after. End of the course during the uh, format informal feedback during the session. Uh, before and after, Maha. A summative end of the course. So, so I think everybody is close to the correct answer. Right. Exactly. Formative during the course, summative at the end of the course. Example, asking students to submit one or two sentences, identify the main point of lecture, have students to submit an outline for a paper, early course evaluation, assessing a grade or the final exam after the uh, simulation, critique a senior like rectal university faculty course evaluation, so because of the time, I have to go. So I have one minute left, sorry. 
So this is the last one. Please guys, please educators, just remember this, a successful curriculum must respond to first evaluation and feedback, changes in the knowledge base, our knowledge today, not like our knowledge yesterday, and will not be like our knowledge tomorrow. Changing resources, including the faculty. Changes in target learners. Learners 10 years ago, not like our learners now, not like our learners tomorrow. Changes in the needs and values. Thank you so much. So I appreciate it for attending this presentation. If you have any question, please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Walid. I think you summarized uh, like a very big topic in a very, very easy way. Anybody have any questions, guys? If you want to raise hand or like you can write it in the chat. So I'm just going to summarize whatever Dr. Walid mentioned that when you, we, we use this six approach when, you write, when we write a curriculum or even when you write a scenario. So it is very important to go through each steps and spend time on each one of them. Like you have to know why you want to do the course. Is it like because a complaint or is it because of your, uh, you're actually a, a program director and you want to do this or even like uh, uh, you have any problem. Like Dr. Walid is a human factor. So when we have any issues regarding the hospital uh, related to this, we direct it to him so we can write a scenario sessions for those issues. And then the target learner, the goal and objective, then choose the method, implement it, and then dry run it. It's very important to try it. And then at the end, evaluate yourself and the course and the trainee. Any questions? It is recorded and we're gonna post this in the website uh, soon. Um, excellent review of Karen Steps, Dr. Walid. Thank you, I really enjoyed the topic. Okay. Any questions? So for you, you feel like from your expertise, Dr. Walid, what do you think the most important steps among those? Is there is anyone which is higher level in, uh, in assess, like higher level in implementation or in applying comparing to others? Do you think all one of them is? Yeah, all these six steps are important. But the most important one for me is to identify the problem, to identify the gap the real gap that you want to cover, you want to address by conducting this simulation course. I agree with you. Like in there, all of them are important and it depends on the situation you're going through or like you want to do it. So it's, it's all of them is actually very crucial and you have to pass through all of them. Uh, you, cannot step, you cannot skip anyone and you have to pass through all the six steps. What do you think about the P-A-D-D-I-E? If you, if you better, can you just uh, specific, can you just say what, what actually you mean by PDDIE? Does it mention like a PTKA or? P-A-D-D-I-E, is it a uh, nomonymic for something? Added modules. Plan. Yeah, ACT plan, yes, act. This, is, this is the PTKA. This is, uh, it, it can be used, but I prefer the six steps. Is, so this is the easy way, way to uh, to write a curriculum. Exactly. It's many, even, many, a scenario, many, 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 even a simulation yes. session, it's, uh, you apply yeah. to, we apply to both. Anybody have another question? So I think this is end of it. Thank you, Dr. Walid. And oh, hope to see you guys next month. Next month, uh, uh, we're going to have different topic. It's going to be presented by uh, Reem Al-Ajmi, and she's going to talk about uh, Molaj. So uh, be, uh, be ready for the next month activity. Just to highlight, we're going to do each month uh, one of those activity uh, to highlight important topics and simulations. And we really thank you, Dr. Walid, for summarizing a very big topic in a nutshell. Like as usually we teach uh, this in what, three hours? Curriculum development, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Dr. Amani, just, but I sincerely thank everyone 
the participants their stars that from bottom okay. of my heart that send in this to participate in, in this in this in this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I definitely want to make sure I give special thank for you and for for the trouble as such okay. for to facilitate this this kind of uh, uh, presentations courses. Thank you so much. Thank you. I agree with you. We had a very excellent engaged group. So thank you guys for being it like to take a time and be with us in this presentation. And uh, thank you, Dr. Walid, again. Thank you for the scientific committee and the membership committee for organizing this. So thank you all for coming and uh, sharing your thoughts and ideas and participating with us in the uh, monthly activity for simulation part of the society. Thank you, guys. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye.